So make a break week for Brexit, for Theresa May. Any clarity, realistically, what could happen? I, mean, I think at least we're coming to the finish line, so I think this week we'll learn some real news about what is about to happen. Okay. Now, what we have to understand is that the, the agreement that she's presenting to the parliament mm. is not really an agreement. It's just a transition to find an agreement, so mm. it's a two-year transition. So they're not really voting yet on what they want, mm. but they don't even want that because it contains the Irish backstop clause mm. that they don't like. Mm. So the most likely thing that we will see this week is another transition, maybe a transition to a transition transition uh, until they agree on what they want and can they, how they can put together the Irish backto backstop with a solution to how to leave the European Union. Mm, you think the best choice for the UK, I know, is to revoke Article 50, uh, that March 29th date, uh, and stay within the EU. So revoke, revoke, or revoke and push the date down the road? I mean, I think transitions at this point they're just becoming more and more complicated. They're adding uncertainty. They're raising the emotions within the, the British citizens and within the British Parliament. They're not being very useful. Mm. So I would say let's start. Let's go back to zero. Let's revoke Article 50 and let's come up with a plan, if there is one, to leave the European Union mm. that has to be agreed by the British and that is consistent with what the European Union is willing to give. But that would be construed as scrapping Brexit. It will. I mean, it's obviously not ideal. Uh, the, the vote, the way it was put to the, uh, to the citizens was not right. And now we find ourselves in a situation where there's no good solution. So you have to find a compromise. Mm -hmm. But from my point of view, that would be the best compromise for the UK and also for the European Union. And what probability would you ascribe to that happening? Because so far, it just seems like, you know, uh, Theresa May is fighting this battle within uh, her party and then with the Labour Party. And then there's another uh, back and forth happening uh, with the EU officials. So do you think she has the mind space to think about just saying, OK, you know, this is not working out. So let's revoke because that's the only option left. That's the only option there? I don't think she will. I think politically it's easier for her to postpone things, but mm -hmm. postponing things means going all the way to June when the next European Parliament election is happening yeah. and buying some time to figure out whether she can get more concessions from the European Union. Mm -hmm. That to me is a dead end, but that might be the most likely scenario after this week. And what about pushing forward for a second referendum? Where does that fit in to the scheme of things right now? Because the chorus on that is getting louder too. Again, that, that will be a little bit what I'm suggesting, go back to zero and maybe put forward a referendum which makes more sense with more options. Mm -hmm. but, but again, politically, I'm not sure that's going to happen. The idea that a second referendum is not democratic sounds a little bit bizarre when this week we have three different votes by the British yeah. Parliament. So it seems that voting more than once is also a democratic with the option. Same Hi, I'm Emily Tan and thanks for watching CNBC. You can check out more of our videos by clicking on the boxes on the screen and don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more. Thanks for watching.